computer. All right, so let me start this machine up. Um, this is actually something I'm working on for another class, right? For one of our employers that I can't really talk about, so. But I can show you this stuff because it's mine. All right, so Splunk is a sim tool, y'all. It's a sim tool. Well, what do sim tools do? What have we learned about sim tools so far? Oh. Say that again. Oh. Synchronization. Hold on one at a time. Go ahead, Amara. Oh, I said um, that they collect logs and info and analyze them and make them pretty. Yes. They collect logs for you, right? They they do more than collect logs, but give me a second, I can't. All right, so they do more than just collect logs. They, um, they collect logs, they, they allow you to correlate different data from different locations, your proxy logs, your firewall logs, your IDS logs, your IPS log. It allows you to correlate so you can investigate what the heck just happened. All right, someone says that their computer's moving slow, they're getting pop-ups, and they can't open up certain files after they went to a website. Well, one, how can you begin to figure out what happened if you're not logging anything if you're not logging anything from your proxy server which will capture the website that they went to which would capture the the application that they downloaded right your antivirus logs would to capture if the file was contained or not if it was detected your host logs or netstat logs that are showing active connections because if there's a trojan on it or some type of rat your netstat logs will show you Right before I start Splunk, remember NetStat? It shows us our active connections. If I do NetStat ANTP, it's gonna show me what I'm actively connected to right now. I want to, I would like to see this, right? As a SOC analyst, I want to see what certain systems are connected to without having to log into each and every system. That's gonna to take too long. I want you to make a script, which I did. I want you to make a script that's gonna run this NetStat command over and over and over and send that to Splunk periodically. So if somebody says that they have, they think there's a network chosen on their computer at 6 p.m., we can go and look at that log file, the, those netstat logs at 6 p.m. to see the active connections. So let me go ahead and start up Splunk. It's a sim tool, you can download it from the internet. Um, duh, from the internet. See, it's free to download, free to use, free to test it out. So if you wanted to download it, you would go to spunk.com. Going extremely slow right now. It's gonna make me just gonna open up another tab. Now, y'all, what logs do you think do you think would be important to send over to Splunk? Sign in. Sign in logs, those would be your security logs. Anybody else? What do you mean, like time? Right, you, well, your log files should have the timestamps in them. You wanna make sure that they, they do have correct timestamps, right? But you wanna grab your firewall logs. You wanna grab the logs from your web server, your database server, your antivirus logs, your DNS logs, okay? Maybe run ARP, the ARP command, right? But this is Splunk, you're right, this is the website. You can come download Splunk free, Splunk create an account, do your thing. Um, if you go to training somewhere, they have 
uh, a free Splunk course that you could take. I recommend people take it after they get certified. But this is the Splunk service on our computer here. This is now a Splunk server. Well, it's not a Splunk server, but we have a Splunk service that we installed and set up on this endpoint. And it's publicly, well, not publicly, but it's accessible through HTTP. Wait, I think this is PS. No, this is HTTP, let's see. Yes, through HTTP, All right? So I'm not using port 80 for this though. Remember I said port 80 was a standard HTTP, HTTP port, but we don't have to use port 80. I'm using port 8,000 right here. Okay, but anyway, let me log in the spot. And I'm gonna go over to one of the dashboards I created. Hopefully it's still working. I created a dashboard for, it was a, a dummy dashboard for sock stuff and it's not working. So let me see something real quick. Should be working, it's using all time. Uh, oh. All right, this one's working. Maybe I'm not finished with the with that dashboard then. Uh, yeah, maybe I'm not finished with that's weird. I will come back to it, but oh yeah, there's nothing. I'm tripping. Sure, sure, there's nothing here. <laughs> All right, um, because I didn't do anything there yet. So here's it. Here, here's we were just talking about Nestat, right? Scratch this. Look at this Nestat command right here. This look pretty. I mean, this looks good to me, right? But if you were to send this to a director or a manager, this this looks this would be garbage to them, right? You can even see, remember grep? We just learned about grep. If I wanted to grep for poor 8,000, that's what we're using for Splunk. You see how it just gave us every line for poor 8,000? That's an active connection. But look at this, look at Splunk. Look at how neatly this looks. Okay, you can see the protocol right here. All right, okay, let me use this. See the protocol, the source IP. Okay, source port. Remember we said we can use any source port. Destination IP, destination port, the process ID number, the program that it's using, we can see Firefox, and the state of the connection, right? It gets even better. We can see it in a pie chart. These are the active programs, this right here, right? All of this right here is right here in a pie chart. Now you can visually see which one is being actively used the most, right? And that's this squid proxy. And then your external connections, you can see which one has the most count, right? Or which one is being actively used the most, right? All of that, you can still see it from here, but it's just harder to see it, right? You can still see the Firefox service with the PID number 7306. Right now, that's not that. Well, that's a PID number for something else, right? But then you can see the source IP, the destination, right? It's still here. All of this information, the protocols are still here, but it's easier. See what I mean now by it's it's prettier from a SIM tool that's analyzing all these logs for you. Now imagine getting all these logs from tens and thousands of different servers. Okay, none of, none of this is magic. We have to tell Splunk where these logs are. All right, and, and this is the last thing I'll show you. I tell Splunk where these logs are. Well, first of all, look at where the logs are. They are under var log. You can see the net stat logs right here, 
All right, I have a script. That's just running. What does the cat command do? Shows everything in the log. All right, so we're about to look at everything in the net stat log. All right, this log, this is the script running that's collecting this information. Then I tell Splunk, then the cat command again. I tell Splunk, Splunk, I see, uh, hold on. Tell Splunk, hey, I want you to ingest this log file. I want you to give it this source type. Right, we're gonna source type classifies the data. Okay, we're classifying the data as network, and I want you to put it into this bucket. So anytime I look for it, I can just look in this bucket for these logs because you're gonna have a whole bunch of data coming from everywhere. Proxy logs, right? The proxy logs are gonna be stored as these are the proxy logs. Squid is a proxy. So I store the proxy logs, I classify it as this source type, and I put it in the same security bucket because they're both security tools. Well, that's that's architect stuff, admin stuff right there. Um, but hopefully this helps. This is Splunk, y'all. It's a sim tool. It aggregates different logs from all, from, I mean, as much as we want from around our environment. And it's really only effective as our logging. Okay, any questions y'all on, on Simtools? All right, I'm gonna take that as no. <laughs> and what we're gonna do, we're going to use this to wrap up class. We went over time, we wanted to have a little bit of a little fun with Splunk. Uh, Pete, thanks for that question. Uh, hopefully this helped a lot, y'all. So if it did, that's good. If it didn't, let me know. We can talk more about it. Other than that, y'all, I will see you tomorrow. Same time, same thing. Please study, y'all. Please, please, please study. Uh, all of this is only as effective as how much you study, how much effort you put in a study, how much effort you put into grasping the concept and playing around with the labs you got the labs for a reason okay you don't you have the labs for a reason so play around with them if you have time um, but make sure you're studying and organizing your notes first okay other than that you all have a good night stay blessed make sure you hold on to your loved ones and i will see you tomorrow you too